Hello from the legendary state of North Dakota. You're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Peace. Enjoy the show. Everybody, another new day is here. I'm at the rest area just inside of Ontario. I have to go pick up a load of lumber in a town called Ear Falls. It's nearby here. That load is going to a town called uh, Isanti, Minnesota. It's near Minneapolis. We're gonna get that taken care of today, probably deliver it tomorrow morning. And then I have a load already waiting for me down there coming back up home. Had a little bit of a uh, unfortunate meeting with a black bear last night uh, in Manitoba on the way here into Ontario uh, he he hit me I didn't hit him he hit me he uh, ran into my truck on the driver's side here uh, hit my steer tire just ran right into it uh, came out of nowhere it, just, it looked like a shadow running onto the road and terrified me at first that it was a dog it was a young bear it wasn't a fully grown bear luckily Old Blue suffered no damage. The only damage was three of these lug nut covers were missing. And this bumper is slightly, slightly bent. We'll have to bend that back into place. Just bent. So it looks like it just nicked this here. And then it hit here, took off three lug nut covers. And then probably went flipping around. Caught the edge of my steps here. Caught my steps there and then uh, rolled off into the ditch. Like I said, I was pretty concerned that it was a dog. So obviously, uh, well, hitting any animal, your, your heart sort of stops for a second. And I didn't hit it, it hit me. So uh, I, I doubled back, I did a U-turn. I, I went back and uh, wanted to go check on it, make sure it wasn't suffering. It didn't seem like I hit it very hard. So I didn't even know if I like fully if it just bumped me or grazed me uh, Well at that speed I was going highway speed 100, 100 kilometers an hour <clears throat> 60 mile an hour Even just grazing it and having it run into my steer tire like it did uh, I found it and uh, It was definitely dead instantly. And it was a, a black bear. It wasn't a cub, but it wasn't a full-grown black bear either It was like a teenager or a young adult black bear and I pulled over safely beside it i want like i said make sure that it wasn't suffering i don't like animals to suffer and don't get me confused for those crazy animal rights activists or anything or uh i like a good steak i like to eat my meat but i don't like to unnecessarily allow animals to suffer regardless of if they're food animals or pets or wildlife I don't like to see life suffering. I think all life is uh, special. So I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, it wasn't sitting there struggling. But no, it was definitely, it was definitely. I won't go into details of how I <laughs> definitely knew that uh, on YouTube here, because it was a little bit gory, but uh, it was definitely gone instantly. So I guess that's the best circumstance we could ask for for the bear. I mean, shouldn't have been crossing the road and jaywalking in the middle of the night. Uh, poor guy, poor guy. Well, yeah, I guess uh, my steer axles are gonna need an alignment now. 
I'm gonna run run with it the rest of this trip just to make sure I checked everything I stopped I pulled over I checked everything uh, the bear didn't get underneath the truck at all so it didn't touch any of my lines or anything underneath there literally just <laughs> grazed the outside of the truck here and uh, I don't know if it was just in my head but after that on the way here I felt like the truck was slightly pulling to the right as if like uh, it hit this and sort of bumped the alignment out just a little bit so uh, when we get back I'm gonna bring the truck in uh, get a steer axle alignment and wheel balancing in the front just make sure everything is in its proper place yeah that was my story from last night on the way here I didn't film yesterday uh, this is starting the trip here like I said, we're going to Ear Falls, Ontario, picking up some lumber, bringing it down to Asante, Minnesota. And then we're uh, coming back up here. You can probably hear my engine heater in here. You might say I don't need to use it in the summertime. It warms up the fluids in my truck. It's a nice day. Before I turn over my, my motor, since I have this option, I like to get the fluids moving and warmed up a little bit before the engine starts turning and then let the engine warm up itself for about 15 minutes and then I start going. Uh, it's just a habit I've gotten into, I guess. But, all right, that's my story. Let's get trucking. You see, before I even turn over the motor now, I haven't turned it over yet, it's already sitting at 150 degrees water temperature on this dirty gauge. I don't know, uh, I feel better about turning it over this way, see? I already got the key in here, so. Gotta treat her nice. Well, let's get going, shall we? Reset our tripometer. I guess we turn this on. Okay, let's get rolling, shall we? Diesel's not with us again today. He's spending time with his family at home, enjoying his semi-retirement. I've been here for 10 consecutive hours now, which means that after I pick up my load, I'm legal to cross into the United States on my hours of service. Because if you haven't watched me before, when you're on US soil, you gotta follow the rules of the US. When you're on Canadian soil, you gotta follow the rules of Canada. You always gotta follow the rules. Hours of service are similar between the two countries? Similar, but not the same. Welcome to Ontario. Thank you. Thank you very much. So nice of you to welcome me so kindly with such a beautiful big sign. I wonder what they're doing. I bet you they're twinning this. I bet you they're making it four lane. Ah, they're taking Trucker Josh's advice. Very nice. All right, our turn.
thing in the morning my shifts aren't always the smoothest it's frustrating sometimes it's always that gear it wasn't too bad it's very different shifting in a truck when you're fully loaded you know at a gross weight of 95,000 pounds and when you're empty uh, but that's no excuse I should be better than that 250 kilometers to Ear Falls and they should be able to load me up right away and we'll be on our way this is highway 105 northbound northern Ontario here beautiful scenery and it's so close to home in Manitoba yet so so different, completely, completely different terrain. Taking a little longer than I thought to get there because the speed limits are only 80 kilometers an hour. I should have expected that, but we'll get there. Look at this, eh? so I don't fall out rolling across the parking lot to avoid those comments. Let me figure this out. So I'm trying to add a bunch of new content onto this channel. These vlogs are going to stay the feature of my channel. Uh, this is the main, main thing that I do, these daily vlogs. I want to add a couple of other shows and spin-offs on here as well. I'm going to separate them all into playlists that they're easy to uh, uh, differentiate and stuff. But I really want to up the amount of content I'm posting on here. So I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. I'll talk to you more about it in a separate video. You probably already watched it. It'll help you understand more what's going on because you'll see a bunch of different content all all surrounding trucking and stuff and like my life just from different angles i'd like to do a silent vlog where it's like a, a second take of the same day like today and then a second take of the day with no words maybe not even music i might add some music because sometimes you got to add something but it's like a silent vlog just the story of my life in silence so those of you who hate listening to my voice and don't like my face that much, that's cool. I'm gonna make a, a video for you. I don't know if I'd call it a vlog then, because a vlog is a video blog. It's talking, that's what a vlog is. You gotta be talking, sharing your experiences verbally with your audience. I don't know what I'd call it if it's a silent vlog. Just sharing like the sounds of the truck, the sounds of the highway, the sounds of nature, the sounds around me giving you the story of my day without talking. We'll see what happens, we'll see what I can come up with, but I'll throw a bunch of stuff, like I said, I'm gonna throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. But this content, my daily vlogs, 
are going to be the main content on this channel. They're gonna keep going ahead, just like normal. So if you're subscribed here just for this content, don't worry, you'll still have a video. I was told to come over here and park by the sign that says truck parking. Gotta fill out some uh, paperwork here. Oh, and also let these guys know that I am loading. Well, actually, I'm not loading cargo yet. I'm just sitting here, but I am here. And then they want me to fill out some paperwork here. Shut this thing off. No need to waste any fuel sitting here doing nothing. Let's see, we will not load you if you don't have proper PPE. Number one, you need a hard hat. Check. Number two, you need glass. I'm assuming they mean uh, glasses, not just glass. Mine are made of plastic. I'm hoping that'll be okay. Check. Gloves. Check. Put them on when I go outside. Work boots. Check. The PPE should be on while you're strapping, especially. Okay. Time in. It's 2 p.m. Vehicle number. Bum, bum. The date today when I'm filming this is August 9th. 2022 mandatory to sign the next page okay well it's not mandatory to sign this page it's mandatory to sign. i'm gonna sign this page too there you go there's my autograph you're welcome where else uh this guy here uh carrier guess i should wait till they actually load it till i sign it but whatever i trust them that they're gonna put the right stuff on i'll make sure I'll make sure. We're picking up two by four by sevens. 84 inch studs. Huh. I'm being loaded right now as we speak. I've been instructed I must stay in my truck like a good boy. I have to stay in here until they're done and until they've given me the, the all clear to go out and tie it down. I kind of like this way better because then I don't have to worry about them accidentally running me over and they don't have to worry about where I'm at. They can just load up my trailer as quick as they can, and then I can go and do my stuff. It's like a typical load of two by fours. I'm hoping my tarps won't be in their way, but if they are, like I said, they'll come and tell me to get out and move them if I have. I have them tied down to the trailer at the front. Sometimes they want to put their lumber right up to the front of the trailer, and then I have to put the tarps somewhere else. I'll show you. Uh, <clears throat> I'll show you a little later. All right, so we've moved forward just a bit. And there's the load. I'm gonna quickly tie this down here real quick. We'll be out of here. Do you remember when we were talking about how sometimes these uh, fly up like this and they come undone? I'm gonna show you how I fix these now. See, I've got my stapler, I've got a piece of rubber anything works cardboard rubber you just put this right on here like this and staple it on that'll hold them looks like that then and it'll hold it on i'll put another one at the back here and that should be good actually i should probably put another one up here gonna want to rip this there you see yeah that's how you fix that problem I believe all I'll need is eight back down the gravel road we go it's always happens that way right you spend a whole day washing the truck first thing Monday morning six miles down gravel road all right i guess it's tuesday it's tuesday whatever first load of the week that's okay because it's just dust you can just dust it off that's why they call it dust most of it will blow off once i get up to highway speed still kind of annoying <laughs> but can't we live in a world where absolutely every single road is paved don't you think that's a world we could all live in 
That's right, Karen. Yeah, we're taking Highway 105 back down to Highway 17. And we're going to be crossing into the United States at International Falls, Minnesota from Fort Francis, Ontario. Kicking up a lot of dust back there. Finally got that windshield cleaned. <laughs> it's been dirty all day. It's been driving me nuts. And you really notice it the most when you're traveling directly into the sun. So I had enough. Pulled over here in Dryden. Uh, I believe this is Highway 502 right here. I haven't actually traveled down this highway before. So I'm kind of looking forward to something new. That right there is the Dryden paper plant. It stinks. Very much, very much. It stinks. And I would take you down here into this beautiful dandelion park, but uh, apparently it's private property. Well, Mr. Domtar, I will respect your sign and your rope. It's a very nice rope. That is your park. And your river. Look at that, uh, the house on the other side of the river over there. How the backyard comes right down to the river. That is beautiful. Man, that's my favorite thing about traveling around is seeing all the different amazing homes and properties and the way people landscape their yards. Really gets me excited about our build. One day, one day we're gonna keep making videos, one day. This is pretty much the main industry here in Dryden. I'm pretty sure that would be the, the first plant, the old one, and then the newer one, and then the newest, biggest one. I don't know for sure, don't quote me on that. I'm not from here, but kind of looks like the progression of time. It's right here on the river here. It's time to go explore this highway. Another highway that I haven't been down before. I don't, I don't see that that often. That doesn't happen that often. Time to go. This load here is sitting at about 77,780 pounds gross. Legally, I'm allowed 80,000 pounds gross in the U.S., but <laughs> from the, the loads I've been used to pull in the last couple of weeks across the prairies in Canada on the triaxle, this feels like a piece of cake. It feels light as a feather. And this is pretty much my max weights, close to my max weights for the U.S. on a tandem trailer. No triaxle for us this trip. A little bit of a break for Old Blue. You've been working hard. Deserve a little break, only pulling 80,000. Okay, let's go. So I had marked this stop down as a load check. I was just checking my straps. I'm not too worried about lumber loads usually. They don't go anywhere in the straps. You can crank them down pretty tight. It's pretty good. We have a long way to go today yet. We're going to cross the border in a couple of hours. Nobody coming there? Let's see through my window. Checking my mirror. Oh, yep, see now there's a pickup coming. Another good reason to have this window on your sleeper. It really opens up your blind side so it's not so blind. Right. After this SUV, we're going. Let's get out of here. This paper plant really stinks. I don't know how these residents here deal with it all the time, but I guess you get used to it after a while. I took this bottom uh, cover off here for now. It was rattling. I have to replace it. I just put it to the bottom. Ah! 
God, my window's still not totally clean. See that? It looked clean and then I faced the sun. So hard to get a windshield clean. Oh well, it's a lot better than it was. A lot better. Still, it's gonna bug me. <laughs> as soon as we get into the sun, you see that? Look at that. It's still filthy. Come on, man. Come on, man. This is Fort Francis right in front of us here. That's the US over there across the water. I don't know if you can see it from here or not, but it's a little ways over that way. We gotta go this way and then go across the bridge and go that way. We're going to America. I stopped here to make sure all my paperwork was in order, that everything was good to go. ready to go to the border and talk to the good custom agent now. I hope they like me. I promise I'll be real good. I'm way too nice. I should have gone. There's a car coming. He's out there somewhere. He's coming. Here he comes. That's all my niceness. That's all I got left. I got a little bit more left, but I'm saving that for the for the border guards. Got to be super nice to them. US side. I'm just trying to make sure we get out of here the right way. <laughs> so here at International Falls, crossing into Fort Francis, so crossing into Canada, there's a toll. I'm not too sure how much the toll is. But crossing into the US, there's no toll. So it only costs you money to leave the US. It doesn't cost you any money to come in. Right away it says speed limit 30. That's miles an hour, not kilometers an hour. Welcome to America, everybody. Got a nice display of flags here. You got the US flag, the Canada flag, the Minnesota flag, the Ontario flag. And I'm not sure what the other ones are.
Minnesota welcomes you. Thank you, good people of Minnesota. So nice to be welcomed by your lovely sign. I will be very good. Oh, why did they put this thing here? What in the world? What in the world, why did they put that there? Well, that's very much in the way. I needed that space to make my turn. I guess I could have taken it wider, but I didn't, I didn't really expect them to put a little sign right there. <laughs> That's okay, we made it work, we made it work. No chickens were harmed. Ah, green means go. South, US 53, this way. Flashing yellow light here means that uh, I can turn left, but they're not going to stop. Continue along this road for 112 kilometers. Here again, it's 30 miles an hour. For us Canadians, when we come to the US, miles an hour is the small numbers on your speedometer. On the inside, the smaller numbers, those are miles an hour. If you're from the US, then the smaller numbers would be kilometers an hour. And there she is lurking in the dark. A little bit of a dark lot. But it's the only one I could find. I know you probably can't see me right now. This is the Carlton Travel Center in Carlton, Minnesota. It's very dark here, everything's closed up. But just across the street over here is a quick trip. Just gonna look both ways, make sure we don't get run over. That would ruin my visit to the States. The parking here at this truck stop was all full, of course, because this is the one with the 24-hour store that's open. So everyone's all parked up here, and there's a gravel lot across the street over there that's pretty much completely empty. I'm like the fourth truck that's parking there. You could probably fit about 20 trucks in there. Oh, well, everything's closed up there, so I'm just walking across the street. Gonna grab some food here grab something for breakfast too so I don't got to run over here in the morning that'll be it I only had 17 minutes left on my e-log